Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. This video is going to cover ways to evaluate the social learning theory in psychology. We'll be having a discussion about the strengths and limitations of social learning theory that will include supporting evidence, counter arguments, comparisons and debates to help you write some high quality evaluation in any essay you might get asked about this approach. And look out for an important tip in writing evaluation to avoid a common mistake students make in exams. We have covered the ideas of the social learning theory in previous videos that looked at Albert Bandura's famous Bobo Dell studies and then at the specific features of social learning theory. So do check those out if you haven't already done so before watching this video. Let's dive in. Firstly, there is the supporting research by Albert Banjura with the Bobo Doll experiment. We covered each of these in the previous video, but to summarise, Banjura in 1961 demonstrated how children who observed an adult behave aggressively, then went on to imitate that behaviour themselves. Banjura in 1963 found that not only did children imitate the aggression they had seen in adults, but also imitated aggression after observing aggressive behaviour in a film and with a cartoon character. And then Banjur in 1965 found that children were more likely to imitate aggression when they saw aggressive behaviour be rewarded or left unpunished compared to when they saw it be punished. All of these studies provide supporting evidence for how children can learn through observing others and the power of vicarious reinforcement. One strength of the social learning theory approach relates to the quality of the research methods used to study human behaviour, i.e. the quality of Banjuri's research. This is because Banjuri's research was a highly controlled lab-based observational study. This means they had high control of the variables to enable cause and effect to be established, and this was seen in the fact that they did a matched pairs design, matching the children in each condition in terms of their typical level of aggression to prevent any individual differences in the children's aggression being an extraneous variable that affected the results. In other words, they were able to say that the cause of the aggression was the result of whether they saw an adult be aggressive or not, rather than their own aggressive tendencies. Additionally, good practice when using the observational research method, like Banjura did, is to have more than one observer of the child's behaviour. This is so that the reliability of one observer's judgments can be checked with another. Specifically for Banjura's study, the level of agreement between the two observers was a correlation coefficient of 0.89, which is a strong positive correlation and strengthens Banjura's findings. Therefore, both their highly controlled study and the reliability of the observations strengthen social learning theory because of the high quality research methods that are the basis for the approach. However, having said all of that, Banjura's research has been criticised in a few ways. Firstly, in relation to sampling. The children Banjur and studied were very young, aged approximately three to five and a half years old. It could be argued that the children at that younger age are more likely to imitate adult behaviour and that as children grow older, there will be less imitation because they want to be more independent and go their own way. Therefore, this questions the extent to which Banjuri's results, and thus social learning theory, can be generalised to the wider population. Secondly, Banjuri's research has been criticised in terms of the task Banjuri used. The situation that Banjuri created with the child and the adult was arguably unlike real life because there was no interaction between the child and the adult at any point. Additionally, Cumberbatch in 1997, sadly not Benedict, specifically critiqued Banjuri's Bobo doll task because this was a toy many of the children had never played with before and so would have been of greater interest to the children, particularly seeing as it would bounce back up after being hit. In fact, Cumberbatch describes how a follow-up study showed that children who had previously played with the Bobo doll were five times less violent than those who were new to it. In other words, the novelty of playing with the Bobo doll may have influenced the level of aggression shown by the children. As a result, Banjuri's research could be argued to lack ecological validity. Therefore, given the limitations of Banjuri's research, this does raise questions about the extent to which social learning theory as an approach can explain behaviour. Now, here's the key tip to help you avoid the common mistake students make in essays in the exam. Whenever you evaluate a study, you must make sure to relate or link your evaluative point back to the question. So for example, in this video, we are discussing social learning theory. So when I just evaluated Banjuri's research, I didn't stop there by just talking about the strengths and limitations of Banjuri's research, but I used that to make a judgment about the social learning theory, because that's the topic, that's the question. 
Another area of evaluation relates to the extent to which the approaches can be practically applied to real world situations. The power and influence of role models on behaviour, particularly if the observers, the audience, can identify with that model can greatly increase behaviour being imitated. This can be seen powerfully in advertising. Companies know the influence and attractiveness of certain individuals and I'm worth it and so will pay large sums of money for people to appear and promote certain products. Beyond the world of people just making money, this same strategy can be used as part of public health campaigns. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there was lots of disinformation, which was having negative impacts on particular groups, notably BAME communities. In order to encourage people in these communities to get vaccinated, public health campaigns were made that involved well-respected and influential celebrities that people from those communities were likely to identify with. Therefore, it can be argued that social learning theory has made a significant contribution to our understanding of human behaviour because of how it can be used for the public good through the targeted encouragement of positive behaviours relating to health. Another way we can evaluate social learning theory is by comparing it with the other approaches. So let's compare social learning theory with behaviorism in two ways. One strength of social learning theory is that it offers a better explanation of human behavior than behaviorism. Firstly, this is because neither classical nor operant conditioning from behaviorism offer an adequate account of learning on their own because they neglected the role of cognitive factors in learning. Important to the process of learning is to store information in our memory about the behavior of others and use this to make judgments about when it's appropriate to perform certain actions. Behaviorism only considers human behavior in terms of stimulus and response, seeing us as passive, whereas social learning theory developed this idea to include the cognitive processes that mediate or come between stimulus and response seeing us as more active. It's not just that a stimulus occurs and then I automatically respond. No, Bandura argued that we can think about our behaviours and weigh up the consequences of them before responding. Therefore, it could be argued that social learning theory provides a more comprehensive explanation of human learning than the behaviourist approach by recognising the role of mediational processes and as such being a bridge between the behaviourist and cognitive approaches. Secondly, we can compare social learning theory and behaviourism in terms of the research methods used to study human behaviour. Social learning theory's research methods could be argued to be superior because much of the research conducted by behaviourists Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner were conducted on animals. As such, the behaviourist approach is criticised in terms of how generalisable the findings from animals can be applied to humans. On the other hand, social learning theory does not study animals, particularly because of the cognitive processes involved in human behaviour. Therefore, it could be argued that social learning theory is a better approach compared to behaviourism because of the extent to which the research can be generalised. Finally, we can evaluate social learning theory by considering the debates in psychology, and in particular, nature versus nurture. The nature view focuses on the role of innate biological processes, and the nurture view focuses on how behaviour is learned from the environment. It is understood today that the debate is not about whether it's nature or nurture, because research points to how nature and nurture interact together, so it's about the relative contribution of both. In terms of evaluating social learning theory, they can be criticised for being exclusively about the nurture side of the debate, failing to consider the importance of biological factors in human behaviour. For example, if we take the behaviour of aggression as studied by Bandura, social learning theory puts the emphasis on how this behaviour is learned through the observation of role models, how well they identify with them, and the influence of vicarious reinforcement. However, key to understanding the behaviour of aggression is the influence of biology. For example, the biological approach would point to research that has demonstrated how different levels of testosterone have been associated with different levels of aggression. Therefore, it can be argued that social learning theory's ability to explain human behaviour is somewhat limited because of its overemphasis on nurture and its lack of involvement of nature. So, now that you hopefully understand something of the strengths and limitations of the social learning theory, bear in mind how you can order and structure your discussion about the approach in an essay. 
Notice how we've used a variety of evaluation points that have included supporting evidence, counter arguments, as well as debates to use our wider understanding of psychology to evaluate this approach. And don't forget that most important tip that if you evaluate the methodology of a study to make sure to link it to the question. For more on the other approaches in psychology, check out the links to the playlist in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.